Our nation is less than two weeks away from a potentially facing what Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke has called a calamitous outcome. Unless we act, the United States of America, for the first time in history, may face the prospect of defaulting on our loans and not making good on the promises we've made to millions of Americans. Madam President, this outcome is unthinkable, and we should be doing everything we can to avoid it, which is why I am so disappointed that instead of working with us to tackle this issue seriously, the Republican-led House of Representatives has chosen to put politics ahead of everything else and has sent us a bill they call the cut, cap, and balance. Well, first of all, Madam President, this is a colossal waste of time at a critical time for our country. The Republican House sent us a bill that may appeal to their extreme base, but right now the American people are looking for results, not more rhetoric. The Washington Post reported that this bill as being, quote, a doomed plan. Even conservative columnist David Brooks said in his column yesterday that this bill has, quote, zero chance of becoming law and that it's, quote, likely that Republicans will come to regret this missed opportunity. But second of all, Madam President, this bill isn't just a waste of time. It is truly terrible policy. It would essentially enshrine into our Constitution the failed Republican policies that got us into this crisis in the first place. It would bind our hands from responding to national emergencies that require quick and decisive action, like another terrorist attack or Hurricane Katrina, payments for families who lost their homes in tornadoes, or in an infrastructure breach in states across the country like the Howard Hansen Dam in my home state of Washington. And Madam President, it would force us to say no to families across the country who need some temporary support to help them get back on their feet and at the same time help them contribute back to our economic strength. Their bill would have prevented us from taking any real actions after Wall Street brought us to the precipice of financial collapse in 2008, which would have led to thousands more jobs losses across the country at a time when we could least afford it. And it would not allow Congress, as representatives of the American people, to make the investments we need to make to continue innovating and educating and leading in this 21st century economy. Madam President, Republicans may be talking about the virtues of cutting and capping and balancing now, but their actions and their votes speak a lot louder than these three words. And the Republican budget that this same House of Representatives just passed, a budget that slashes and burns away at the fabric of our society, that cuts off middle class and working families from the health care and nutrition and education and housing support they count on, even that Republican budget wouldn't meet the standards of cut, cap, and balance. And Madam President, you know who else's budgets wouldn't meet those standards? Ronald Reagan's, George W. Bush. It's truly unbelievable that they are playing these games with the clock ticking to a financial crisis. Madam President, we don't need a so-called cut, cap, and balance bill to put in place sensible policies that work for American people. My Republican colleagues may choose to ignore the fact these days but we did some responsible cutting and balancing of our own here in America, not that long ago. And we didn't need a constitutional amendment to do our jobs either. Like many of them, I was here in 2000. I remember when President Clinton left office, we were on a course to completely pay down the $5.6 trillion debt by 2012. I remember the projections of surpluses. I remember some of my colleagues actually being worried that the large surpluses in years ahead could be a problem. And I remember the efforts by many of us to safeguard that funding for our seniors, for our future, and to pay down the debt. But I also remember what Republicans chose to do with that surplus. They couldn't wait to get their hands on the nation's credit card. And when they do it, did, after President Bush took office, they spent lavishly throughout the Bush years and particularly in the Bush tax cuts of 2001 and 2003, trillions of dollars in tax breaks went to the very wealthiest Americans. There were capital gains tax rollbacks, tax breaks designed to benefit corporate giants, and a new tax bracket 
that provided the very wealthiest Americans the lowest tax rates they've enjoyed since World War II. And those tax breaks were all unpaid for, all handed out to those who could most afford to pay, and all put on our nation's credit card. And then our country was led into two wars, neither of them paid for. But Madam President, now credit card bills do. Now that all those tax cuts and spending that have been sent out need to be reckoned with. And just as our nation is starting to recover from the Wall Street crisis that devastated so many of our families. And now Republicans are playing political games with our future. Madam President, this is serious. If we can't come to an agreement by August 2nd, the consequences will be dire. A few weeks ago, the Bipartisan Policy Center put out a report authored by a former Bush Treasury official about what would happen if this Congress fails to act and the administration was forced to make desperate spending decisions in August. And the scenarios were worse than grim. Potentially at risk are the benefits in health care we owe our veterans, loans for struggling small businesses, food stamps for people who are trying to buy groceries, social security checks for our seniors, unemployment benefits for millions of workers who are desperately trying to get a job today, and even active duty pay for our military. These risks are unacceptable. Senior citizens in this country are worried the social security checks that they depend on and that they've been promised may not be coming in the mail in just two weeks. And they read the news and hear that Republicans are now on the floor playing games. Mothers and fathers are sitting around the table trying to figure out what they do if their unemployment or food stamps is gone. And we're playing games with another bill that's not going to pass. They turn on the television and they see the House of Representatives passing a bill that has no chance here in the Senate and isn't an answer to what we need to do. Madam President, this is an embarrassment. The American people deserve better. Democrats on this side have come to the table again and again and again with reasonable proposals to come to an agreement. We've come to the middle. We have offered up serious and deep cuts in federal spending. But again and again, those on the other side have said no, no, and no. So far, they refuse to make any deal that doesn't protect tax cuts and loopholes for oil companies and private jets and millionaires and billionaires. As we see today, they seem to be more focused on offering up red meat to their base than actual solutions for the American people. And they are more fo focused, on, focused on negotiating tensions within their own party now than on working with us to get results. So, Madam President, 13 days to go. I urge the House Republicans to get serious about this. This so-called cut, cap, and balance bill is bad policy. It's the kind of silly politics that Americans really are sick of today. It's a waste of time as our country is coming to a countdown fast. Madam President, if it, all it took were slogans and gimmicks to solve this crisis, the House Republicans would have this covered. That's not the case. The clock is ticking for us in this country and for families across America. We're going to keep working to solve this crisis. We are ready to compromise. We need a partner at the table that is serious about this as the American people is.